Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Randy, and this is the fifth in my series where I go through each year and tell you my favorite album, song, movie, and television series from that year. We're on the year 1954 now. Thanks for everyone that's made comments and told me some of your picks, or talked about my picks as well, whether you thought they were good or not. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, like one of the rules I have is that I have to have a physical copy of whatever I pick, so maybe I don't have a physical copy of Maybe your favorite, but we'll see. And let's get started. 1954, my second runner-up for album. And that second runner-up is Songs for Young Lovers, Frank Sinatra. The CD also came with Swing Easy on the other side, on it as well. And same with the, I also have a MoFi recording. And you can see the Swing Easy isn't big, and but there's the Songs for Young Lovers. Capital MoFi, but yet, uh, this, this is his seventh studio album uh, on Capital, and originally it was an eight track, 10 inch album, later expanded to 12 songs. Uh, the highlights from the original album, I Get a Kick Out of You, the Cole Porter tune, and two Gershwin songs on there, They Can't Take That Away From Me, and A Foggy Day, both of them excellent. Now my first runner up, is Louis Armstrong plays W.C. Handy. Uh, I have the CD, which has additional tracks. Unfortunately, there's no picture of W.C. Handy on here. My favorite songs on here are probably St. Louis Blues and Beale Street Blues. Now, if you go to Beale Street in Memphis, you'll see a big statue of W.C. Handy. Now, he also often referred to himself as the father of the blues, and he did uh, write and compose so many classics. And Louis Armstrong was a Great job with them, these here, uh, many being my favorite versions. And the winner for my favorite album from 1954 is Chet Baker Sings. Now this is a Tone Poet reissue. It was originally on the Pacific Jazz label. Some great pictures in there. But uh, this was his first vocal album for the jazz trumpeter. And My Funny Valentine, which is on here, was kind of, kind of became his signature tune. But yeah, Chet Baker sings. Chet Baker was probably, I can't remember if it, it was he or Mose Allison, the first jazz artist I bought. But yeah, Chet Baker, my winner, album of the year. And now for my song of the year, uh, the third runner up from this uh, doo-wop box set put out by Rhino on the first volume, the song Earth Angel Will You Be Mine by the Penguins. Now, there's a picture of the Penguins right there from the booklet, nice booklet that they put out. Uh, and it's one of the most famous doo-wop songs. Uh, the Penguins name came from the cool cigarette pack where they used to have a penguin cartoon character on there. It was recorded in Dootsie Williams' garage, president of the Dootone label. Definitely not an auto audiophile recording. Uh, he showed it to John Dolphin of Dolphins of Hollywood Record Store, who began playing it, and it became a popular hit right away, so they didn't do any overdubbing on it. And it's the classic doo-wop love song. Second runner-up is by Howlin' Wolf off his Moanin' at Midnight compilation album. This has, has two albums on here, Howlin' Wolf and Moanin' at Midnight. And it's the so, next to last song on there, 44. Uh, blues man Roosevelt Sykes. There's a picture of him right there. This is his country blues piano ace from 1929 to 1932 album. Uh, on here it's called Kelly's uh, 44 Blues. But uh, Sykes provided the lyrics and first recorded it in 1929, but the tune's exact origin is unknown, but it was popular in the early 20s. Uh, Howlin' Wolf made it an electric blues classic and emphasized the handgun reference. You had Howlin' Wolf on harmonica, Hubert Sumlin and Jody Williams on electric guitar, uh, twin, twin guitar attack Steve from All the World's a Stage, just like Thin Lizzy. Uh, well, actually, on this song, it's the piano and the harmonica that kind of stand out. Then on piano was Otis Spahn, and Willie Dixon was on bass, and Earl Williams on drums. 
classic blues tune, 44. My first runner up from the great Muddy Waters. It's the tune, I'm Ready. This is a compilation album from Chess. It says, as seen on TV, but I don't ever remember seeing anything from Muddy Waters advertised on TV. But yeah, Muddy Waters. Uh, it was written by the great Willie Dixon. Uh, the protagonist in the song is not a man to be trifled with. Some of the lyrics are, I got an axe-handled pistol on my graveyard frame that shoot tombstone bullets wearing balls and chain. I'm drinking TNT. I'm smoking dynamite. I hope some screwball start a fight because I'm ready. Ready as anybody can be. I'm ready for you. I hope you're ready for me. Hope you're ready for Al Howlin' Wolf. Or, God dang it. <laughs> hope you're ready for Muddy Waters. I'm ready. And my favorite song from 1954. From Big Joe Turner. It's the song Shake, Rattle, and Roll. First song on there. Uh, written by Jess Stone and first released by Big Joe Turner. And this is the definitive version. And it's in also included in Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. It topped the R&B charts. Now, Bill Haley and Elvis Presley also released covers of the tune. But it was Turner and also his early music that helped set the foundation for rock and roll. Shake, rattle, and roll, Big Joe Turner. And now for my favorite film of 1954, and it was a stacked year. A few movies that were under consideration but I didn't pick were Alistair Sim and An Inspector Calls. Very funny Bob Hope movie, Monsieur Boucou. What is it? Monsieur Boucaire. And the great uh, universal classic creature from the Black Lagoon. But my third runner-up is... Walt Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, uh, directed by Richard Fleischer, who gave us the great noir, The Narrow Margin. It was adapted from a Jules Verne novel. Uh, it also reminds me of my biggest disappointment as an eight-year-old when we went to Disneyland in California and the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea ride was shut down. Something was wrong with it and they were fixing it. But I got over it. Great performances by James Mason as Captain Nemo, Paul Lucas, and Peter Lorre are also in it. And it has, also has a somewhat hammy performance by Kirk Douglas, but it's a lot of fun. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. My second runner-up is Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. This is the Criterion Collection edition. You can see it there. Also has a... Nice booklet in here, like they, and with a lot of extras. But yeah, great movie. Uh, it was a great year f uh, for this to be my second runner up. It's a cinematic masterpiece. And those not familiar with this Japanese classic, you may know the American counterpart, which was the Magnificent Seven. This has seven samurai picked to defend a small village of outlaws. And if you like uh, Magnificent Seven, see the OG. And my first runner-up, the Alfred Hitchcock classic, Rear Window. I see James Stewart right there. And there he has a broken leg and he's in a cast in his apartment. And his only entertainment is watching the other tenants uh, through his window. Uh, he starts to suspect that one of the tenants has murdered his wife. It's a great finely paced Hitchcock mystery thriller. It also has the great Thelma Ritter, who is hilarious, and of course, Grace Kelly. Magnificent film, my first runner-up. And for my favorite film from 1954, I kind of had to bend the rules a little bit. Uh, I thought I had a DVD of this movie, which I don't, but I know I have it on VHS. Unfortunately, all my VHS tapes are packed away in boxes, and there's going to be a lot of trouble to try to find it. Hopefully, when I move and I have more room, I can put those out as well. But uh, I do have the soundtrack album for that to show. So I do have something to show. And you have to take my word for it. I do have a physical copy of the movie. But it's the Star is Born, Judy Garland here. Uh, it's a story been told several times by Hollywood. But this is the best version. Although the original with Frederick March and Janet Gaynor isn't bad. It's actually pretty good. It's the story of two showbiz performers 
where the lady's career starts to eclipse her husband's. This one stars Judy Garland and James Mason. Judy has some great songs in there. And James Mason has one of the all-time best performances, according to me, as Norman Maine. I love the scene where he wants to look at her one last time and ask her to look at him. Of course, she doesn't get the significance, but it's great filmmaking, great performance by James Mason. That's my favorite film of 1954. Uh, my favorite television series from 1954. Now, I need to reiterate that television series are only eligible their debut season, but I will take the full run of the series into consideration. And my third runner-up is The Adventures of the Falcon. Uh, I talked about The Narrow Margin, which Richard Fleischer directed. And, of course, Charles McGraw was in that. He, he is the star. He is the Falcon. Uh, he was, you may have known him from a lot of the film noirs, but uh, he plays a more rugged Falcon as opposed to George Sanders and Tom Conway in the movies. The Falcon is an espionage agent, investigator, and troubleshooter. Fine series, The Falcon. My second runner-up is Sherlock Holmes. Uh, this series ran 39 episodes, which in 1954 was just one season. Uh, how lucky. Now we're lucky if we get 12 episodes for a season. And it starred Ronald Howard as Sherlock Holmes. Uh, not that Ron Howard. And Howard Marion Crawford as Dr. Watson. Ron Howard is not Basil Rathmone, but he is pretty good. Uh, check it out. Sherlock Holmes. My first runner-up is... Colonel March of Scotland Yard. You can see it right there. But uh, Colonel March was head of the, I kid you not, Queer Complaints Division that investigated unusual and supernatural murders and other crimes. Uh, Colonel March was played by uh, Boris Karloff. And the show only ran for one season. Another one that only ran for one season. Boris Karloff is great, complete with an eye patch and a penchant for unconventional crime solving. Uh, Christopher Lee also makes an appearance, another horror icon. Great, great series. Boris Karloff and Colonel March and Scotland Yard. And my favorite series from 1954 is a Western series, Stories of the Century. This was a fictional Western series that would mix in historical events uh, like they met up with Billy the Kid, the James Gang, Doc Holliday. Uh, it starred Jim Davis, who would later play Josh Ewing, Jock, Jock Ewing on Dallas, and Mary Castle, and she was later replaced by Christine Miller. Uh, Jim Davis was a railroad detective who, along with his assistant, would track down outlaws, many famous or infamous, uh, wonderful series, stories of the century. And that's it for 1954. Thanks for staying with me and all your comments. Uh, everyone take care. Uh, it might be another week before I put out another one because I'm going on vacation, but hope everyone's doing well.